Uh, welcome to the tutorial. Today we're going to learn how to do this animation here. It's not going to win you any awards, but if you learn how to do this animation, then you'll be able to do this animation. Now to do this animation, you will need uh, three images, a background, foreground, spaceship, that kind of thing. Um, I downloaded these off uh, Pexels. I'll leave links to it uh, below. Uh, once you've downloaded them, make sure to resize them to fit 1920 by 1080 and save them out as PNGs as they tend to animate better within DaVinci Fusion. So let's get on with it. So once you've finished editing your photographs, uh, come back into DaVinci Resolve and import all your media which I've done just here on the left. And we're gonna take the desert image here and drag it into our timeline. And we need that to be about 24, 25 seconds long. So we can actually just right click on it and change clip duration to 20, or set, we'll make it 25. There we are, got a 25 second clip. If you don't have a timeline open, you can actually right click on the uh, uh, picture itself and go create new timeline using selected clips and it'll bring up this window and just change the name to whatever you want it to be and just hit create and it'll create the timeline with the image already in there we need to make sure this bar is actually over the uh, photograph and we need to go down here to where it says fusion and click on that it'll bring us into here the first thing you'll notice is that DaVinci Fusion has a nasty habit of renaming our clips this is actually the desert just here and it's called it medium one we need to change that back and how you do that is click on it hit f2 and let's just call it desert now we don't actually need the desert for the first part of this tutorial so i'm actually going to disconnect it from here and just move it down what we do need is a particle emitter which i'm going to bring up here a particle directional force and a particle renderer like that and we're going to connect that particle renderer to the media out now if you don't see this toolbar here you go up to the fusion menu make sure show toolbar is selected with that little tick and it'll it'll pop up like that another thing I need to point out to you in fusion is um, you have the option of viewing two windows in fusion so for instance here I can click the dot there and it puts in the left window and on this media out here I've got it going to the right window just by using I'll just zoom that in see those little dots there so I can click that to the left window or to the right window I'm just going to turn that off I actually like just using one one window so I'm just going to keep it at one window now when we play the uh, animation back we notice that we don't have a lot of particles so let's fix that if you click on the particle emitter, this window should pop up here. If it doesn't, go to the inspector tab up here and make sure that's highlighted. So with the particle emitter selected, we're going to change that value here to 3000. And if we look at our screen, we've got loads of little white dots popped up. Unfortunately, they're going in the wrong direction. We need the particles to go up not down and how we change that is if we click on the particle directional force here and go here we see it's set to minus 90 we need that to be 90 so let's just change that and there we are got 3000 particles going up now the only problem so far or the only problem with this is that they're actually being emitted from a sphere we need them to be emitted from the actual image itself so let's go to our media grab the building that you've chosen good housekeeping f2 rename it and if i try and connect that building to the particle emitter by grabbing this you'll see it won't connect and the reason for that is we need to tell the particle emitter what region uh, we're going to emit the particles from so if you go to the region tab just up here i'll just pull that up region tab just here and change it from sphere to bitmap 
And what you'll notice is, is a yellow little triangle has come up here and we can now connect the theater to it like that. And the particles have changed to match the shape of the theater. The only problem we have now is, is the particles are still white and we actually need them to be the color of the building. So clicking on the particle emitter, go to controls and where it says use style color, we're going to change that to use color from region. And as you can see, it's taken on the color of the buildings. Now it's time to connect our desert image back in. And the way we do that is we get this little uh, pick, pick wick here, I think that's what they're called. And we drag it out and we connect it to the particle renderer like so. And it will create a merge for us. If I hit play now, you'll see that uh, uh, the screen is doing absolutely nothing. And the reason for that is the particles are actually coming into the merge as the background and the desert is coming in as the foreground. We actually need to swap that and it's actually quite easy. We just click on the merge node, right click and hit swap inputs like that and our particles come in. We now need a second copy of the building and we're going to connect that to the merge uh, like so and Again, we need to hit F2 and correct the name on that. So let's hit F2. I'm going to call this Theatre 2. And we're going to actually use this one to control the erosion of the building. And how we erode things here is we're going to use a beast line. So making sure that you're on the node, click on beast line and a mask will come up like this. Now, if we hit invert, on the side, the building will appear. We're going to create a fairly large mask. So let's go just here, like this. I'm actually going to go into the building and make sure it's joined at the end. And you can see, if I zoom in, that the building is now being eaten by the particles. I'm just going to add a little bit of soft edge to it so it's not so harsh. Now we can actually control that mask uh, using the center X and Y. So if I hit the Y one, as you can see, as I go up and down, it actually gets rid of the building. So let's, um, let's keyframe that. So we're going to go to frame zero and we're going to go here and you see that little diamond next to the Y there. We're going to click that and then we're going to go to frame 180 and then we're going to move that all the way down like so. And you'll notice this time it's automatically created a keyframe. Look at that, looking wonderful. Now the only problem that we have now is that the particles look a bit boring. They're going straight up and down and they don't look very organic. So we're going to fix that. So I've just dragged those nodes out by selecting both of them and hitting move. And you can move them like that. We're going to click on the particle emitter. We're then going to hit shift spacebar and type in the word turbulence. If we click on turbulence and go up to this window on the right, let's change these values to 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2 and 50. And what you'll notice now is that when I play it back, the particles are looking a bit more organic. And now it's time to bring in our UFO. So if I go over to our media pool here and just click it and drag it, and again, it's changed its name. So F2, I'm going to call that UFO, like that. I'm going to take the pick wick or this line or whatever they call it, and I'm going to connect it into the media two, like so. And the first thing that we notice is it's absolutely ginormous and we need to change that. And how you do that in um, Fusion is if we click on it and then go over to here and hit transform, it'll automatically connect it to the chain. I'm just going to show you that again. So click on the UFO, go across to here, it transform and it connects. If you don't have the um, UFO highlighted like this and hit transform, it'll bring it into its own little space like that. And the way you connect it is by holding the shift key. If we bring it over here like that. You see the line changes color. If we let go, do it again. Mouse is being weird. You can see that it actually connects like that. 
So, we're going to resize it to about, about there. And then using the X and Y center up here, what we're going to do is we're going to put it in position like so. Now we need the UFO to come on at frame zero and be in position by frame 40. So we're at frame 40 here on the timeline. So I go up to the center X and Y and just hit the little diamond to create a keyframe. We want it to be there for roughly 200 frames. So we go to frame 200, go back up to the center X, Y and hit that diamond again. And so now it'll keep in that position between 40 and 200. And now if we go to frame zero using the X, we can actually move it straight off screen. I hope you can see that. Now, if I play the animation, our UFO comes in, slams into position, and all the particles go into it. Now, I don't actually like the way that it goes into position. It's, it's very abrupt. And we can actually control that uh, quite simply. We go to the UFO transform here. Actually, let's rename that as well. And hit F2 and call it UFO trans. If we go up to this window here where it says spline, let's just click on that. It's a bit messy, so what we'll do is we'll just close down all these little windows here. And there's our UFO trans. And if I click on it, nothing happens. And the reason for that is we need to click on these two little arrows here that say zoom to fit. And there we are, there's our keyframes. Now, select both these keyframes here. And on your keyboard, hit the letter F as in Frank. And there we are, we get some nice soft keyframes like that and we hit spline to get rid of it and now when we play the animation it comes in a lot smoother now I don't particularly like the color of that UFO so let's fix that problem as well and the way we do that is I'm going to select these two nodes push it up a little bit so it give us some space I'm going to click on the UFO trans shift spacebar and this time I'm going to type in CC color corrector just here and we're just going to add that and with the color corrector highlighted let's go over to the right hand side and we can start playing around with the hue and the uh, saturation and the gain until we get something that we kind of like there we are i'm kind of liking that so we're going to keep with that now if we watch the animation we'll see that the um the particles actually come through the top of the UFO. And obviously that's not very realistic. So let's fix that problem while we're here. And the way we fix that is if we go to the particle renderer, I use my middle mouse key to move up and down there. If we click on the particle renderer and then click here and add a, a mask to it, we can actually go up to the UFO. I'm gonna make a big mask here. Just clean it up a little bit by touching those edges. And you can see that we actually now have the reverse. They're actually coming through the top of the UFO and we actually need them not to. So if we go over to the window on the right and hit invert, you'll see the particles now are coming up, but they're not going through the top. Now, our other problem here is that the particles are emitting from frame zero. We don't want that. We want them to emit when the UFO is in position and then die off before the UFO leaves. And the way we fix that, if we go to the particle emitter, make sure we're on frame 40. And here we're going to change that 3000 value down to zero like that. We're going to hit the diamond to create a keyframe. We're then going to go to frame 150 and we're going to create another keyframe. I'm going to change that value to 3000. So what will happen is no, no particles. As soon as the UFO hits its spot, particles start to spawn and they go up to 3000 by frame 150. We then need them to die out. So we're going to go to frame 180 and we're going to change that value to zero. Now, if we play the animation, particles come in, blah, 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 blah get to frame 150 and then they fade out. 
So we now need our UFO actually to go off screen. So to do that, let's click on the UFO transform like that. We're going to go to frame 240. We're going to go up to the center X and Y, and we're going to go to the X one. I'm going to make sure that's dragged off till the box is actually off the screen like that. Don't leave the box on like that. Make sure it's completely off the screen. And now when we play it, UFO comes on, gets to frame 200 and then vanishes off screen. So we're pretty much there. Now, the next question is, is how did I do that shadow on the uh, on the UFO? And the answer to that is I actually cheated and I'll show you how I cheated. What we need to do is copy these two nodes. Sorry, selling pork pies there. We need to copy these three nodes, right click, go select them, right click, copy here, blank area paste. Let's give ourselves a bit more space. Come up here, drag these nodes down, connect that into the merge like so. It will create another merge for us. And let's go to where the uh, where the spaceship is, so say frame 160 like that. So we now have two copies of the spaceship. If we go to the UFO transform here, and then on this angle value, if we change this to 180, we now have the same UFO, but upside down. Clicking that UFO transform there, I actually just added another transform, and then I moved its position all the way down like that. So it was uh, at the bottom of the screen. So now both of them come in, hit the mark, blah, 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 go off. But we need to turn that into a shadow. And that's actually quite easy to do. Let's just bring it back to say one frame 60. So just click on the color corrector and take the gain all the way to black. And now we have a shadow. It's not a brilliant shadow, but it's a shadow. So let's clean that up a little bit. Grab our nodes. What we're going to do is we're going to click on the color corrector node, shift spacebar, look up blur, and I just used a Gaussian blur here and add that to it. And as you can see, it's created a nice edge to it. So let's just increase that like so. Um, also, if you click on this merge, you can blend it into the background a bit more and also take down the uh, Take it down a bit more so it's just subtle like that. And now if we go to the beginning, we have our nice animation. Now I did do a mistake, a deliberate mistake on this animation. And that is at the end of the animation, the UFO goes in front of the tree. And my question to you is, how would I make it go behind? Let me know in the comments and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.